Hello all, and now we're going to move past Aquinas and look at people like Scotus and Occam and what they uh, did in the kind of uh, philosophical tradition. And I would say one of the first real things that Occam does that uh, stands out and why it's considered revolutionary, I suppose, is the rejection of um, universals and a kind of form uh, that uh, the Greeks and the medievals uh, were interested in and they uh, took that and Occam says that it's actually just particulars uh, you know in reference to our language in a kind of um, phenomenon of um, intentions of, you know, uh, wanting to um, describe, you know, a particular being, particular qualities. Um, there is no kind of hierarchy of um, being in that sort of uh, tradition leading up to this point. Um, he's uh, definitely not uh, inclined toward a sort of metaphysical idea of these sort of things. That's um, you know, we're going to leave the sort of, um, you know, final causes and, you know, what's the purpose of, of nature. Um, we're going to leave that behind and, uh, you know, we're not going to ask about that. We're going to ask more about what the actual, um, causes are within matter and, uh, the forces of it the kind of Faustian force, if you will. And, so as it comes towards, you know, God, God has these ideas uh, that aren't in these kind of archetypical forms like, a, you know, Aquinas and uh, other thinkers would say. He's, uh, or, well, Occam and, and uh, the others in this time here um, would say that uh, God's uh, ideas aren't eternal, but... Um, they're actually uh, a demonstration of his will into particular beings and particular things. So they're his ideas. Um, and obviously if you kind of um, really take what uh, he's getting at, it's kind of, um, you know, taking us down to the kind of individual perception of um, one's own universal categories. Um, it's your own categorization of, uh, you know, qualities and things of that nature. This obviously leads the door open to, you know, things like utilitarianism and um, individualism. He's uh, definitely uh, along the kind of nominalistic ideas. Although it is... Uh, one could accuse me of maybe, um, you know, overcharging the likes of Occam and um, Scotus, and uh, you know, it's it's not very likely that you know Francis Bacon understood uh, what he was uh, getting himself in for in the kind of uh, you know um, you know he kind of saw it more in this sort of, you know, using, um, you know, the sciences or the method towards a greater uh, religious, uh, you know, purpose. It could be an interesting side to maybe also say how you can draw a parallel perhaps to some of the ideas I was talking about with Epicurus um, and the Hellenic stage where you know, the, there's uh, indifferent gods in that sort of, sort of sense and you kind of could argue that you're starting to see that happening here where um, you know God's idea uh, God simply made you know mechanistic mechanistic uh, forces the way they are um, because it was just his idea for it um, and uh, so if you look at it from that sort of perspective, though, you can kind of 
see that, um, you know, perhaps he's just made the idea and then uh, the, the fall would happen, you know, in medieval kind of context and the kind of religious context of um, the fall of, of man away from um, the ideal. And um, us not being able to, you know, overcome sin and, and get back to that uh, sort of has a kind of uh, hint at that, I think, to some degree. Um, but uh, other than that, I also wanted to perhaps talk a little bit about how you can see from the co sort of uh, you know, use of, of um, scientific uh, discovery with Galileo and uh, you know, after a while you'll have it with Newton and, um, you know, the Adam with Democritus, that's, that comes back, right? You have, you know, the, um, the want of, of expressing matter and, uh, time and, and, and space as well. This of course goes away from, again, the kind of telos of, of, of the Greek insight and more towards the kind of demonstration of a, of a kind of historical empiricism towards, you know, forces and gravity and this sort of explanation of, of um, cause and that kind of, you know, this is the way things are. And of course, you know, for, um, you know, in this time, in this context here, uh, of course, this goes back to God, but, you know, when we're talking today, obviously, which is kind of, uh, you know, uh, modernity is kind of always, uh, you know, in the backdrop to every one of these videos, and you kind of can't help but draw parallels uh, to right now, and so to kind of <laughs> go and just point our fingers and say, well, it's all these guys fall right here, uh, I think, like I said in the, my last video on, you know, the paradox of authority and kind of looking at the Protestant Reformation, you know, these kind of conflicts, these insights, uh, this sort of thing happens for a reason, like people just don't become skeptical in the Renaissance um, just for the, just, uh, just because there's reasons and uh, as to why that would happen and uh, why it would be repeated in the kind of, if you want to look at it from a Spanglerian kind of way of, um, you know, losing your vitality of kind of becoming uh, questioning and choosing the sort of examined life over the actual um, vitality of, of the life of that civilization itself. Um, but uh, yeah, I suppose to close out, get away from, you know, all this kind of rambling, I would want to say perhaps that you can see how we're clearly laying the framework here for kind of the English empirical um, tradition that's to come about after here with you know Hobbes and, and Francis Bacon and you know why they would choose science the sciences and uh, divorce um, um, you know, the breaking up of, of, of the political um, and the commu and the greater society uh, away from the polis as uh, was seen prior um, you know and into these kind of different categories of, of, of empirical ideas and um, looking for uh, causality that's kind of you know the Anglo tradition of, of always looking for causes as to you know why what caused this and what caused that and uh, so on and so forth uh, but yeah, really interesting stuff. There's there's a lot of implications that comes out of this, and obviously you have uh, the Continentals are going to start up. Uh, we're obviously going to try to do some Descartes here, and uh, mathematics and, and the rational kind of uh, scientific way of, of doing things uh, that also comes about as well. Um, it is kind of interesting though that. Uh, you have this sort of set of thinkers that develop here uh, in, in the Anglosphere, in particular uh, with Hume and Locke and Hobbes and um, the kind of, uh, I think 
almost the kind of you know necessary uh, you know survival instinct of, of you know uh, Francis Bacon the philosopher he's uh, he's gonna um, you know uh, look to say what if I'm explaining you know objective science here you can't really you know charge me of, of these uh, uh, these hair uh, these crimes of uh, heretics when it comes to the, you know the Protestants and the Catholics uh, obviously having religious struggles in this time period uh, if I'm just over here talking about you know empirical science then uh, I'm just demonstrating the science you can't charge me of anything <laughs> it's kind of interesting to see how you uh, in this time period would literally want to divorce uh, philosophy away from you know the political and 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 its sort of sciences that comes about with uh, Hobbes but yeah uh, that would be my concluding remarks I hope you guys enjoyed this little ramble video I haven't had one in about a week so uh, thanks for watching